Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, GFS Ensembles, ECMWF Ensembles. Then we'll have a look at the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature and the weather warnings as well from the Met Office as there is a yellow fog warning in force. Now in yesterday's video we were looking at the possibility of seeing a northerly wind next week. We're still seeing that in some of the models but we're not seeing it in others. So there's big uncertainty at this stage. The general pattern um, it's pretty bang on now with high pressure in uh, sort of dominating. However, it's whether we get this cold northerly flow inducing much colder and potentially wintry air in um, as well. And we'll have a look at what the models are showing today. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also, do check out the channel membership. I've got a podcast coming out tomorrow morning for all the channel members. And of course, it'll be coming out for everyone else on Friday. So do sign up for that um, if you're interested in the podcast early. So if you do have a look at the latest GFS, um, we'll see it still goes pretty chilly. But one thing I want to point out first is this video is coming out a little bit later than I actually anticipated. And that is because I wanted to get this 12Z GFS run to fully come out. Because if we briefly have a look at the 6Z run, which many of you may have seen, it goes extremely cold. And I didn't want to make a video on it um, simply because there was a real possibility that it is an outlier. Uh, a quite a cold outlier. It wasn't that much of an outlier in the ensembles, but we'll still go through it. It does go into a very locked cold uh, spell. I didn't want to get it in my video because I know I'll be getting all those comments saying oh, I'd uh, just picking on the coldest runs. Um, and if I did show it in the video, I'm not picking on the coldest runs. That that's This is what has happened. It's pretty much the coldest run we've seen in about two or three days. And it typically uh, came out just before I wanted to record the video. So I've held off to get the 12Z in. Um, and we'll see how they both sort of evolve. So if we do run through the uh, six head quickly, because this is an older chart, you can see we see the application in the jet stream, and then we see that northerly wind come in, bitterly cold northerly wind, and we go into sustained cold spell. Upper air temperatures getting down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, and it is bitterly cold with high pressure sitting over the top of the UK does eventually move away by Thursday, but then we see another northerly wind move in by the end of the week, and we just stay in this sustained cold northerly to northeasterly spell of weather on the 6Z run. And you can see why I didn't want to show it in, in the video. I did want to see what the 12Z was showing because it is uh, and is looking like quite a big outlier. Now, if we do go to the 12Z, I must say the 12Z does backtrack from that quite a bit, but it's not massively different as we'll see. So you can see the high pressure ridging towards Greenland, and that's going to be the whole thing with this northerly wind, how far northwards that high pressure does get. You see on this GFS run, it's still quite a potent northerly wind, but it's backtracked quite a bit from the 6 Z run. We still get quite a cold air mass moving through, especially down the eastern side of the country, but it's going to be more of a chilly, cold feel than a wintry feel, because those isobars where they're pointing is more out into Europe, that's where the most of the snow showers, wintry showers, uh, features will be going. Now, if we do have a, go, have a look back at the pressure charts, you can see the high pressure sticks around and we stay with a bit of an easterly flow, cold upper air conditions, and we would still be seeing pretty chilly conditions similar to this week with average to below average temperatures, probably below average actually, because we've had that cold air move through, it would have cooled the surf temperatures down and then with an inversion, we've just kept these cold temperatures. Now, if we look at the upper air temperature, you can see a bit of a milder sector does move through, but that high pressure still is one north and does bring back in another cold air mass. Before the end of the run and we stay pretty chilly before westerly winds start to break out again in the atlantic but high pressure is trying to build towards scandinavia potentially getting in an easterly wind so the gfs 12 z still stays cold just nowhere near as cold as a 6z run so i am a little bit optimistic we could be going into quite a cold period not necessarily wintry period but when we look back at temperatures it we i do think over the next week maybe two weeks including the next few days temperatures are going to be more than often below average especially for many parts of england and wales maybe not northern scotland because this week we do have above average temperatures because more of a westerly wind but for many areas next week or two could be quite chilly but whether it delivers any snow uh that's going to be very very difficult to say it all depends on what happens with this northerly wind next week 
if we just see something like a six head come off which was a bit of an outlier i must say um, even though it does have a little bit of support we would be having seeing a lot of snow something like the 12 head wintry showers would be around but again wouldn't expect anything too massive um, so you can see the different scenarios that there are and how it is very difficult to say uh, exactly what's going on because a couple hundred mile shifts in these pressure patterns in five seven days can make massive differences between just being cold, frosty, and cold, loads of snow showers. So you can see why there is a lot of uncertainty around at the moment, and there's a lot of differing views what's going to be happening next week. Now, if we do have a look at the tweet GM run for for uh, for today, the 12 set hasn't come out. If we just click on it again, um, it's only gone out to 96 hours, so not really any useful time frame. Don't know why it's not updating on Meta Central. Um, I might have to look at that later uh, to see why why that's not updating. But if we do look at the midnight run, it did follow on similar to the GFS run in terms of showing that more northerly flow and if we do run through you see quite a cold northerly wind moves in very similar to the 12 z gfs run so not too much uh different there and it does stay pretty chilly um high pressure does eventually top up but we stay in a relatively cold air mass with high pressure over the top of the uk again would be pretty chilly um with around average to maybe below average conditions overall um, but not really showing that blocking staying further northwards uh, but once again that is the midnight run so it's a little bit out of date but still does show the general pattern of a northerly or at least a northerly flow coming in early next week um, bringing in cooler maybe much colder air depending on the exact orientation of the high pressure um, before setting up pretty chilly but dry ish week if we do have a look at the ecmdof run this is from the midnight now, the ECMDF, I must say, has been probably the most sceptical model for this. Hasn't really shown a proper northerly wind at all. So if you do come out of this and we see the GFS and GM have been completely wrong, which could happen, um, the ECMDF really would have triumphed here. Because as we do run through, you can see the high pressure tries to get up and we see very little of a northerly flow. We hardly pull in any cold air at all and that cold air all goes into Scandinavia and Eastern Europe and we just stay generally under higher pressure maybe seeing a bit of an inversion but nothing cold at all and that high pressure really does not establish itself further northwards at all so if these in the run come off we would be pretty disappointed considering the amount of GFS runs GM runs and GFS ensemble runs that are showing much much colder conditions so we'll have to see the 12z ecmdf run will be quite a big run this evening um as it will if it does get on board we can potentially increase the chance of seeing this cold north east bound next week but if it stays pretty pessimistic it's really all going to be up in the air um the next day or two is definitely going to be resolved because it is only really in the sort of six or seven day time frame now um once it gets to the four or five day time frame very little can actually change so we're going to see the models converging very very soon I expect even by tomorrow evening's video we may have a much much better idea what we're seeing next week so it's kind of make or break now with every single of one of these model runs so we do now have a look at the ECMDF ensembles, and it shows the different scenarios we could be seeing. Now, yesterday we did see that there was about a 25% chance, or 25% of the ECMDF ensembles, which was going for that raw northerly wind, similar to that GFS 6 head run. And if we do run it through today, we go out to day 5 first, you can see that high pressure going up towards Greenland, and you can see all different slight uh, orientation shifts. And it's going to give vastly different outcomes all depends on how far north of these orange and reds get and if we go out to day seven which is when that northerly wind uh, is most likely to come in you can see 18 um including the control operation run have a bit of a northeasterly wind but nothing crazy at all again these are um just anomaly charts it doesn't show the exact isobars even though it does show a rough isobar chart it doesn't show the exact isobar chart from each of the runs so some of the ones in these 18 with the control operation run may be much colder than the control or operational run just because of the slight orientation shift in the isobars but it may still have the center of the height in a similar space so we do need to watch out for that um another 14 of high pressure more of the top of the uk not getting far north at all and that just be sort of slack northwest you're not bringing anything cold in at all that cold air all going into scandinavia another 12 with high pressure centered over the top to the northeast very bizarre from these 12 um that'd be pulling in a slack easterly we're not seeing that at all on any of your uh, operational runs so as i said very subtle shifts can make drastic changes um because it all is what's happening across northeast canada with low pressure systems coming out of the arctic and how they amplify the jet stream that's making all the difference this high pressure and as you can see 
different resolutions between the operational runs and the ensemble runs. We're seeing these massive, massive differences. Um, and it just shows you how minute a change in that Arctic low coming out of Canada, uh, what minute changes in that can do to the jet stream and the downstream effects in the UK. Um, but if we do finally have a look at the last seven, we'd have like basically cold northeasterly wind. And that's what the GFS operational run for the 6Z was going for. So very small support for that, but it still is there within the East End of Ensemble. It's not completely written off, but as we'll see with the GFS operational run, uh, GFS Ensemble run in a minute, it doesn't have too much support in terms of long-term cold. Now, if we do run it on to day 10, you can see 16 or 31.4%, just have high pressure over the top, just to our west, a bit of a northwesterly flow but not cold pretty slack winds especially towards the south and the west it'll be chilly but nothing crazy at all another 14 just have high pressure sent over the top of the uk very slack wind similar to this week really in terms of high pressure and we just be cold dry frosty underneath that another 13 or 25.5 percent have something similar to what the gfs 6 set was going for with his northeasterly winds um with yeah busy cold conditions coming in from scandinavia another eight have a similar sort of pattern but more slack winds with that low pressure more to our east and again would be a cold northeasterly wind so you can see overall if you had those up 40 percent and getting that high pressure over the top and to the north of the uk pulling some sort of sustained colder conditions whether it's wintry it all depends on how tight the isobars are whether we see a lot of convection and whether we're under more of high pressure or low pressure and that makes all the differences to the sort of the surface conditions but in terms of pressure patterns about 40 percent are going for a colder more blocked pattern so as i said it is still all up in the air and we'll have to see how these uh, models resolve over the next couple days and if we do run up to 300 hours which is quite a long term and i do suspect it will be massively different to what these ensemble charts are showing. You can see 22, including the control, have something similar to what we have now with high pressure at the top of the UK. Uh, Chile in the south, probably a bit milder in the north. Number 16 have high pressure, trying to get over towards uh, our north and our west. More of a north or west, a nor northeasterly flow, but not massively cold, just maybe chilly uh, and dry. And then another 13 have high pressure, trying to ridge up from the south. Bit of a northwesterly aligned jet stream. Cool, but quite a lot more unsettled. And if we go right towards the end of the run, you can see 22 just have high pressure over the top of the UK. Another 16 have high pressures to our west. Still pretty much over the top of the UK, but maybe a bit more of a chilly northeasterly flow. And then another 13 just have westerly winds. So you can see longer term, nothing too crazy at this stage. We're just going to keep an eye on the next sort of seven to ten days. Because as you can see, the amount of uncertainty there is for next week, we can't really look anywhere beyond maybe seven or ten days at this stage with any certainty at all. Now, if we do have a look at the ECM, uh, GFS, sorry, on Somble runs, you can see there is a lot of support from them to be going pretty cold indeed next week. Now, if we do just quickly refresh it, you can see pretty mild at the moment under the high pressure, but of course we're seeing an inversion, so we're actually going to be seeing colder conditions at the surface than we are at 850 HPA. It's going to be maybe 2, 3, 4 degrees at the surface, where it's 5 degrees at 850 HPA. And then by sort of next Sunday, Monday time is where temperatures start to drop. And we do see a sudden drop in maybe about half of the ensemble members. So it's about 50-50 split, which get that much colder air mass in. And 50% don't get that much colder air mass in, have something similar to the ECMWF. Um, and if we do go back to the 6 head run, which had very similar, you can see once again another 50-50 split. Um, some are actually going much, much colder on this run. Got a slightly milder on this run, a uh, 12Z run, but still quite a few going bitterly cold, getting down to minus 5 and below. But once again, there is a split. You can see some just staying around freezing, around average, maybe slightly below average, others going really cold before we start to see a rise up. So you can see even from the most cold um, runs, including the GFS operational run, um, it only lasts two, three, four days. So not a sustained cold spell that we saw in the 6Z. If you go back to 6Z, you can see the operational run staying quite low. One of the coldest runs in the longer term. But yeah, the 12Z most return to around or below average in the longer term. It's just really, there's more probably more scatter uh, for the 17th to the 19th of January than there is for the 23rd of January. Um, just, yeah, simply quite amazing how much scatter we have only five, six, seven days away. Um, and it all is because of that application of the jet stream. How much application we do see depends air will decide on how much cold air we do see as well if you we have a look at sea level pressure you can see again as that low pressure system moves into scandinavia the lower pressure systems will have colder air the higher pressure ones will have milder air um, and yeah again we'll just have to see how it does play out 
Once again, if we do have a look at the dew points, which shows it really well, you can see some dropping really low from the 17th to the 19th of January. And that's that bitterly cold northerly air mass moving in. But once again, only 50% are getting down to that really cold level. And if we do have a look at the two metre temperatures, you can see if we do see that really not cold northerly wind, highs of one, two degrees. And again, if it's sustained, it could be even lower than that in a few spots. So looking quite cold over the next week to 10 days. No massive snow signals by any chance, uh, by any means, quite low precipitation. But if we did see that northerly wind come in, in the correct orientation, there would be some snow, sh snow showers around. I'd say the chance of seeing some much colder air from the northerly wind is probably about 50-50 at this stage. Um, definitely does look cold or colder than average, but whether we see properly cold air, sort of minus 8, minus 10 at 50 HPA, which those colder ensemble runs going for, I'd say about 50-50 at this stage. Um, but for uh, snow uh, uh, and snow showers, I'd say more around 25%, and we'll have to see, of course, how it does play out. Now, if we do finally have a look at the five-day um, sort of precipitation and temperature, you can see over the course of the day we've had rain in the southeast, and it's slowly fizzling away. Uh, and by tomorrow, there should be plenty of more uh, sort of brighter skies in the south. You can see in the north still showers and, and thicker cloud in the south, brighter conditions, but there could be some fog patches around, especially overnight. And once again, more just similar uh, conditions: showers in the northwest uh, and in the south, just cloudy foggy some sunshine around and temperatures all right now if we do have a look at uh temperatures uh sorry in the south it'll be quite chilly further north it might be all right uh you can see across tuesday so today we saw temperatures seven eight nine degrees in the south but much colder north and that's going to be flipping over the next couple of days tonight temperatures going to drop to around freezing across many parts of central england southern parts of ireland parts of wales really quite cold actually and by tomorrow afternoon you can see temperatures widely around six seven degrees so around average but maybe a bit colder than that in the south in a few spots with lingering fog overnight wednesday into thursday another quite widespread frost across south uh, parts of England, Wales, parts of Republic of Ireland, but pretty mild in the northwest. And by Thursday afternoon, temperatures widely once again, five to seven degrees, could be a bit colder in fog patches. Again, that won't be reflected too well on this chart because it will be quite localised where those fog patches linger. Friday could be really bitterly cold in central England and Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland and parts of Wales for early Friday. Afternoon, once again, three to six degrees, really quite chilly. And Saturday, a repeat of Friday, chilly overnight frost and in the day, maybe one to five degrees widely across England um, and Wales, parts of northeast England, potentially getting worse conditions and in the far southwest a little bit milder before Sunday. Still a bit of maybe of a frost around, but more mixing of the air masses. So things turning potentially a little bit milder. Now, if we do have a look at fog, you can see if we do run for it very quickly, you can see the lingering fog in the south um, and those darker patches just showing real thick fog, especially through Friday and Saturday. And that's what we've got to keep an eye on uh, eye out for and of course you can see there is a weather warning for tuesday and wednesday for fog across central england uh, parts of south southern parts of wales as well into east anglia from 10 p.m tonight until midday tomorrow um again dense fog patches like to cause some travel disruption overnight and during wednesday i suspect we'll actually see these Put, be put in force every single day for the rest of the week. I suspect we will be seeing some fog warning in some capacity over the next sort of three or four days. Uh, again, visibility down to 100 metres. Again, may not be too major in some spots, but could be quite disruptive in others. It will be very, very localised where we see these much colder conditions and thicker fog patches. And you just got to keep an eye out for that and make sure you stay safe out, of course, out there, of course, in the fog. So very interesting conditions coming up over the next week or two. Still a lot of uncertainty in the models. But we could be seeing a bitterly cold northerly next week, or we could just be seeing chillier northerly or northwesterly flow. Um, the models are really not doing too well on this, but there are very, very small uh, differences in sort of northeast Canada, which are going to shift the jet stream. And that small shift in jet stream out of northeast Canada is going to make drastic differences to the UK. And at this stage, um, yeah, we've just got to keep an eye really on what's going to be happening early next week. But it's looking maybe encouraging if you're looking for some cold weather. There is the potential there, uh, and I suspect it will be resolved in the next day or two. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.